today we're talking about the US and Iran. Yes, I realized that in the previous episode I said I would talk about Trump's Middle East peace plan, but I kind of pointed to the bleachers and then struck out on that one. Palestine's rejected the deal in Israel. Well, if you watch this show regularly, you know they currently have an out of order sign hanging on their government, as the most recent election has been invalidated and overall went the way of the Titanic. Basically, in a twist no one saw coming, we might have to wait at least a few more months before we solve this whole Israel-Palestine problem. The more relevant story for today is, what's up with Iran and these new sanctions? Now, I've been following the Iranian sanctions fight with the United States since it started, and really leaning into that non-nuclear option pun. I'm sure most of you know why we're talking about it today, but to be more specific, I want to provide a little bit of a historical context for these recent sanctions, because after this episode you might be saying, wow, that de-escalated quickly. The funniest part of the situation is, as we'll get into more detail in a second, we've already sanctioned everything related to Iran. So at this point, it's like boycotting Starbucks and then saying, on top of not buying your coffee, I'm also not going to leave a penny in your take a penny, leave a penny cup. Take that, Howard Schultz. So what just happened? President Trump is set to impose major new sanctions on Iran today. They're expected to target the country's military and oil revenue. Major new sanctions. Whew, does CBS know how to sensationalize news better than I do? To understand these new sanctions, we need to briefly go back in time. This is going to be an Iranian sanctions greatest hits compilation. So let's get out our handy dandy calendar and get started. Our story begins on May 8, 2018 when the United States pulled out of the Iran deal. This meant that we could, from that point onward, impose sanctions on Iran. And well, they stayed in the deal in order to maintain business ties in Asia and Europe, so Iran couldn't start enriching uranium despite the fact that America had left. Now, you'd think we'd impose sanctions right then and there, because we kind of made a pretty big deal about leaving. But much like that guy who storms out of the house party and has to awkwardly wait on the lawn for a half an hour before his Uber comes, our next action took place almost four months later, specifically August 7th, 2018. Now, this is when we imposed our first real sanctions. And try to remember this next detail, because it's going to sound a lot like the sanctions we just put on Iran today. The main overlap is... Under the executive order, Iran will be prohibited from using US dollars. The sanctions will also affect Iran's automotive sector and trade in metals. There were a few more tangible things we sanctioned, but the big hit here came from banning the purchase or sale of the Iranian currency or the maintenance of significant funds on accounts outside of Iran, dominated in Rial, which was also prohibited, as well as the purchase subscription to or issuance of Iranian sovereign debt. Now this not only wrecked Iran's big banks in ways Bernie Sanders could only fantasize about, but also really screwed with their public finances as they could no longer issue debt or store money abroad. Keep that part tucked in the back of your head. These new sanctions also did some kind of funny things that really must have severely hit a caricature of a wealthy person demographic, going after caviar, gold, and pistachios. If you look at their exports though, you'd notice we probably were beating around a pretty big bush there. You know how some enemies in video games have flashing red weak spots? Well, so does Iran's export list. Maybe we should talk about that more than two thirds of their exports that's made up of oil. Well, that brings us to November 5th. You remember how at the top I told you this episode was going to be the Iranian sanctions greatest hits? Well, this November sanction was really the free bird of this list. This November, the US is turning the financial screws on Iran, one of the world's biggest oil producers. Tough new sanctions will make the country's roughly two and a half million barrels a day of oil exports toxic for buyers. That's right, the US actually refused to buy oil from a country. Now this move definitely caught people's attention, but you're probably scratching your head as to, wow, it took everyone a while to actually get mad about this. 
I mean, that was eight months ago. Well, just to close out this history lesson, we gave waivers to the major countries they export oil to. That is, until April 22nd when we announced, now no country can buy Iranian oil anymore. Without access to a debt market or oil revenue, their government started threatening to shut down the Strait of Hormuz if their oil exports were cut off. And if that strait sounds familiar, well, it's probably because on June 13th, someone bombed some tankers in the Strait of Hormuz, and America said, gee, probably is Iran. Of course, after that, on June 20th, Iran shot down a drone flying over. You guessed it, the Strait of Hormuz. Iran has shot down a U.S. drone in what the Pentagon is calling an unprovoked attack. The Pentagon says the drone was flying in international airspace over the Strait of Hormuz when an Iranian missile hit it. But Iran argues the drone was flying in its airspace. All right, so this brings us to today and these newest sanctions that Donald Trump is imposing on Iran. We took their money, we took their businesses, what more can we take? Well, on June 24th, Donald Trump imposed sanctions on Iran's supreme leader. Supreme leader? I think even Kim Jong-un would tell you to check your ego with that one. That's right though, not only is Iran not allowed to do their banking abroad, but if their leader wants to, I don't know, take out a personal loan of $20 billion to keep his economy going, well, sorry. More specifically, the latest round of sanctions denies Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei and senior military figures access to financial resources and blocks their access to any financial assets they have in U.S. jurisdictions. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sure this really sucks for them to have their personal bank accounts frozen in the United States. But in the context of what we've done to their country in the past year, well, this should definitely get filed more under the inconvenience category than a real escalation. If I'm being honest, it might not even make my greatest Iran sanctions hit list. As Bloomberg recently said, the penalties won't have a significant impact on a country that's already in a recession and facing heavy sanctions from the US. Still, the new restrictions serve as symbolic reprimands for the attacks. I will say though, Trump, if you're watching this, I'm not complaining about you not hitting Iran hard enough. Let's not go to war. The point I'd like to drive home here is that very little has happened in this escalation that is unpredictable. When you report on one single incident out of context though, it all seems very crazy. Until something else crazy happens and I have to find a new fun way to recap the last year, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video that I wrote, edited, and posted all in one day. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.